Sylvain Castellanelli and I'm one of the 10 winners of the Algorithmic Titans Challenge. Today I'm going to take you through my process of making and texturing this asset within ZBrush, 3D Coat, 3ds Max and of course Substance Painter. This video is not meant to be a tutorial, I will not get into deep with explanations on specific techniques. That's it for now, so let's move on shall we? First step with the concept. The workflow there is pretty straightforward. Line art scanned and in multiply mode, sketchy background, adjustment layers, light source and some overlaid colors to make relevant parts pop out. It's a very quick sketch actually. The one you do watching a boring TV show. Grab a piece of paper, a pen and uh, there you go, drawing everything that comes to mind. I added some buildings to give a sense of scale, but I already knew the final scene would take place somewhere else. The only thing that mattered to me at this point was the overall look of the Titan and more precisely, his huge red flower head. Next step, the high resolution sculpt. I'm not much of a ZBrush artist, so my workflow is quite basic. These spheres to build the body shape. Mesh extraction for the leaves, feet and white forearm, clay brush, move tool and Damien standard brush for sculpting, as well as layered dragged alphas to add final details. I then used decimation master on each and every sub tool before export to keep all the high res details with a poly count low enough to easily handle the model in the next applications. Retopology within 3D coat. I like it, no kidding, one of my favorite tasks. Getting a clean quad mesh is somehow solving a puzzle, and I like brain games. Unfortunately, due to a lack of time, I had to make a lot of compromises and ended up with a not so clean mesh, at least regarding optimization and animation. Beside that, no triangles, maybe one or two, I confess. As I already had in mind the final pose, I focused on the areas that were to be deformed and tried to get proper loops. Once every object of the Titan and the pedestal retopologized, I brought them all inside 3ds Max. The scene you're looking at is the final one, but the rigging and posing of the Titan came after the texturing process in Painter. I used x and Wrap a little script from Relight Game Studios to speed up the UV work and get nice UV layouts. I also added several elements such as vines, flowers, fences, a well, the shepherd house, trees, a bridge and lots of funny ships. I love them. One should make a contest about funny ships one day. Think about it. Really. In the end, uh, my poly count was way below the limits for the Titan with 30% of the 100k allowed and 8,000 out of the 10,000 uh, allowed for the pedestal. So here we are within Substance Painter and the Titan fully textured. As I said earlier, all the paint work has been done prior to the rig and posing. It obviously is easier to paint when in T-pose. The asset is a single object made of several attached objects and I only have one texture set which you can see right now. The empty space is intentional. I wanted to add a few elements to the character later on and due to a, light of, a lack of time those elements were to be textured with Photoshop. So that's it for the layout. Back to the 3D view. This is the latest version of Painter. So there's a 4K output, but if your computer is slow, you can switch to 2K, see if it dates, but we'll keep it that way, uh, 4K for now. As you can see, there are a lot of layers, 152 if I'm correct, and you want to be organized and name everything at this point, or you can get lost very easy. There you can find brushes and particle brushes, on the shelf also where you can import bitmaps, materials, alphas and the effect panel 
with all those cool effects you can add and drive using the ID occlusion, curvature or position map. On the right, you will also find the brush and material settings. You can tweak any brush and deal with the channels of your material switching on and off depending on what you want to paint. If you want your brush to add height when painting your diffuse, then switch height channel on and set its value to a light grey or drag and drop an alpha in its slot. It's as simple as it sounds. Ok, I'm gonna show you what I did on this asset, painting a petal and a leaf from scratch. So I delete everything, here we go, and we got a brand new model with its normal map, which you can find there. If not, uh, drag and drop it in the shelf, then drag and drop again from the shelf to the slot. So let's create a layer, a new layer, grab a red color and start painting. You see it goes everywhere, it's messy. To solve this, we're gonna simply add a black mask to the layer and everything vanishes. Then hit Geometry Decal, select a white color, the UV mode and click the part of your mesh you want this layer to affect. Now we're done. Let's make a second layer and repeat the process. This time we're gonna pick a yellow tint and uh, paint a border with a uh, with a dirt brush. You see, it works just fine. Only the petal is affected. But having to set up mask each time you had a, you had a layer is tedious. There's a better way to do this. Uh, let's delete and um, create uh, our layer and then create a folder which works the same as gr uh, Photoshop groups. Then we drag and drop the layer into the folder and add the mask to the folder this time. And there you go. Now each and every layer in this folder will have the mask applied. So I uh, will add to my red black color a yellowish crunchy border with a dirt brush same as we did before and set it to a screen mode and low opacity then on another layer I will add some dark red still with dirt brush to keep it organic and chaotic Trail is paint job, nothing else. Next, I'm gonna use a stencil with a texture of a petal I'm gonna project on the mesh. So you drag and drop it on the substance material in stencil mode, and there you go. You hold S key to manipulate the stencil, and when in place, just paint over and it's projected on your mesh. Easy, isn't it? Now I'm gonna fill in the gaps, there, outside, and a little bit on the top. Ok, done. Fusion mode, opacity, same work as in Photoshop, ready. Next layer, with the particle brush. I wanted something organic again, but original too. The Vane's particle brush had it all. Look how good it is. Yeah. Again, playing with size, brush size, opacity, fusion mode. To get the, the effect you want. Particle brushes are really fun to play with. Ready? This is a kind of tool that leads you to unknown territories you are eager to explore. An only substance painter 
offers particular brushes. On this layer, I'm gonna use the uh, Hevelix one. Look how, how easy it is to add some effects to your paint, to your painting. So uh, it's really cool. Anyway. This is pretty much it for the for the work on the petal. Uh, I may have had one or two layers uh, additional layers uh, on the initial work but that's pre pretty much it so we're gonna paint uh, a leaf now and uh, introduce uh, the other way of painting in substance painter uh, the 2d painting on the uv layout so uh, okay same thing, a new layer on top and a new folder with its mask and we bring the layer in and start painting the base color. There you go. Now switch to the 2D view. I'm gonna add a kind of cellular pattern border with the crack brush, which won't be really visible uh, due to the compression of the video, but. This is what I did on the uh, initial uh, paint process. Uh, so I repeat it uh, there for you. Um, the UV layout can be manipulated uh, the same way the stencil is. Uh, you can rotate, zoom in, zoom out. which is very convenient and uh, comfortable. So now I'm gonna add a new layer with uh, a darker green to add some contrast. There you go. And now the reason why being able to paint on the UV layout is great. When you add those kind of details like the veins to paint, it's way easier and a real time saver to be able to do it on 2D view. See? The same way uh, you would work on a paper with a pen or in Photoshop with your uh, with your Wacom or uh, any other application. It's uh, see uh, refining with your eraser. And moving on. I will not paint all the veins, this would be too long. But this is what I did. 
the contests. And uh, it's really fun, it's really quick, it's really easy. Refining again. And of course, you can play with opacity and fusion mode to make it blend a little better than that. And we're gonna end with uh, the f this layer uh, and uh, it's soft pink color which is supposed to bring some uh, how do you say a poetic aspect uh, at least that's what my wife said <laughs> kind of poetic so uh, refining again with the eraser to bend it of course you can uh, switch to any alpha with the eraser and this concludes this video. Painting on a 3D model is very th the very same way you would paint on a canvas has become true with Painter. It's fun, intuitive and powerful. So I hope you've enjoyed uh, despite my terrible accent and thanks for watching and see you next time. Goodbye.